hello, welcome back to my studio. This is Emma on another beautiful autumn day here in the UK. I welcome you all here once more and if it's your very first time here, an even bigger, warmer, cosier welcome to you to my studio where we do some fun things with fabric and stitch basically. My aim is to create something that's nice to watch and that perhaps gives you a bit of relaxation but also maybe inspires you to have a go at something you've not done before perhaps. So this week we're doing we're doing some fun sampling with some free machine embroidery and some fabric and stuff and it's really great and it just comes to you. I feel as though I'm so privileged to live here. I'm living in peace and quiet and I just want to send that peace and quiet out into the world. Um, I think there's an awful lot going on at the moment and I'm just sending love to everybody. Wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you some love this morning. From my heart to yours. So this is kind of where we got to last week and I've been doing bits and pieces around the studio. I've actually been doing some more darning of my clothes, would you believe? Some of my jeans where I've actually patched them have needed more patches. Because what happens, I think, is you strengthen a bit of the fabric, don't you? And then the next bit goes. So I've been adding little patches on. And do you know what? There is as much satisfaction in doing that, weirdly enough, as there is in creating the most wonderful piece of art. Just because I think I love stitching, I love fabric, and I love feeling that I'm doing something useful and good. And it's keeping my jeans going for a little bit longer. It means I don't have to rush out and buy new things. Although I have been buying new things, I've treated myself to some one or two nice new pieces of clothing, which is just lovely. So they're kind of coming into my wardrobe and I've got my old favourites as well. And it's just very nice and peaceful and easy to do. So, as I say, we got so far with this last week. My aim with this sort of particular um, series, if you like, is just to play. I'm really, I'm really knocking it back. I'm not creating anything. This is not going to be a wonderful piece of artwork. It's not meant for any purpose. It's just, I went out with my sketchbook, if you watched my video uh, last week, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of what's around me because I'm so lucky, as I say, to live here. Even if I lived in a city, though, I would find things to look at. There's always parks, there's cracks in the pavement that have things growing in them. I think and nature, nature is just amazing, isn't it? And I think you can't just beat being out in nature, going for a little walk how, for however long you go for. Um, I have lived in towns, I've lived in cities, I've lived in Liverpool, I've lived in sort of, um, where else have I lived? Down south, I've lived in towns and cities, different places, and I've always managed to find nature. When I, when I worked in an office doing an admin job, which was a fun job to do, I quite enjoyed it, it was very satisfying, but every lunchtime I went out to where the trees were, there were some trees in the local park. And I used to go out, obviously, if it was raining, I had to take my umbrella. <laughs> but that was my thing. I went and kind of got a shot in the arm of some nature before I went back into the office. Because it was very sterile in the office. You can imagine it was just full of computers, lots of lovely people that I worked with. But it was computers and telephones ringing. And to go out into the peace and quiet of the trees was just lovely. So that was part of my purpose in making the video last week, was just to show you a little bit of where I live, but also just, you know, how beautiful nature is. Aren't we lucky to be able to see it and be in it? Um, so, as I say, we're going to do some more sampling. We're going to see where it's going to take us today. We're going to get stitching. So we're going to choose some threads and we're going to get on with this piece and enjoy it. So thank you for joining me here. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video at the end. And if you haven't subscribed already, I invite you to do so because that helps spread the word of what I'm doing here, which is just sharing some creative fun. So we'll get on with this now. Okay, so the first thing I've done is put a little bit of stabiliser fabric on the back of here because I think it'll just get a bit too um, sort of soft and scrunched if I don't do that. And I've just got some dark blue thread in my machine and I'm just going to do some stitching and see what comes. if we can get you to see that. In fact, it's probably easier if I just turn it over. And I've just done some very simple 
umble, umble stitching. I used to call it cow parsley. People call them umbles these days. Um, you can see they're quite rough and ready. Uh, it's done with free machine embroidery. If you haven't done that before, I've got a couple of little videos under my beginner's playlist. If you go and have a look, you'll see. And you can, you'll be doing this in no time at all. Um, and it can be as rough or as neat as you want it to be. And as you can tell, I've done this for a very long time. That's why it's so tidy and beautiful. <laughs> So anyway, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some colour onto this and we're just going to see where it's going. I'm just playing around with colour and, and shape and seeing what happens. So I'm just having a little rummage and thinking about what colours. So I'm just having a little rummage and thinking about what colours I might use next on this blue piece. And I'm thinking I quite like that sort of dark, rich colour. Um, just put it up against that. I quite like that with that but I've also, there's lots of possibilities here but I really want something that sings against this. So the other thing I've brought out is a yellow, thinking about those leaves and also, oops, just find, I don't know whether to go with something really bright and vibrant or whether I'm going to in fact try using a really thick thread or a thicker thread I should say. So let's just Let's just have a little think for a moment and then we'll do some more stitching. So I'm just loving how these threads all look together when you put the blues in the bottom that I chose just to try out on here. And I've put these gorgeous orangey tones on top, yellowy, golden, rich, russety colours. I think they're just gorgeous together. Um, so I've chosen, in fact, a kind of coppery colour here and I'm just going to start off. Of wanting these to feel as though they're all a little bit battered by the weather. Oops. It looks like a little palm tree actually, I think. Much more exotic. So you can see that one's standing out much better, but I've got this, I like the roughness of what's going on behind. It's not just a crisp, clear um, uh, cow parsley piece. It's got all this sort of roughness going on behind as though there's something else going on, which I like. I think this one, we're gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna start this one from the bottom and just go up, see what happens. Obviously, you could be drawing these out on your fabric if you want them to be, you know, really orderly. But if you're willing to take a risk, and just go for it. Okay, so the next thing I'm just going to try is this slightly thicker thread. So we'll see what happens with that. And uh, again, I might just start down at the bottom and see where we get to with that. Put that out of the way. Twizzle it round a bit. So you can see the material is just doing its own thing here, which I like. Now this is a bit thicker um, thread, so I'm just going slowly with it. I don't know. I can hear the machine's having a little bit of... But I like the way we've then got layers. Obviously what you could do is you could machine stitch up to there if you wish to and then do that some hand stitch or you could hand stitch it, you don't have to machine stitch it. Okay, so let's go and have a little let's go and have a little look at this and see see how it looks. So you can see, I hope. The different sort of layers going on there. What I'm liking is you can't really see the dark blue ones 
but there's a hint of something going on behind and I think possibly if these were more spread out there I've put a lot into one little space but I like the way it's affected the fabric but it's left this clear down here because originally I thought I was going to stitch over the whole thing in blue but I decided I wasn't because I like this bit down here where it's just kind of crinkly I don't know if you can see that I did a zigzag stitch up a couple of these as well so that gives it a little bit more sort of texture going on and I just like the way it all kind of mingles and there's a sense of space down here with just the stalks and then there's this sort of busy layer up at the top and the different shades going on so it's just a sample it's just me playing it's just messing about this is a really good way if I turn you turn it over you can see it did get a bit busy up here but you can see the simple lines down at this end which is a nice contrast um, and you can see it's all very simple stitching really nothing not rocket science as I say and I just love the colors and it's been a bit of playing and it'll feed into whatever might come next or not it might be simply I've done this for the fun of doing it and this is something very much you can do at home you don't need an embellishing machine as you can see you could if you want to you could be ironing this fabric you don't have to leave it all crinkly like this but I do like the way the light just sort of moves it around a bit and it's not all one thing um, so we'll put a little frame on it like this we can see how easily that could become a nice little picture to put on your wall or it's the start of something bigger depending on what scale you do it at but I just think that's really a nice little start See, obviously it depends on how long you do your stalks and stuff. This wasn't designed to, to be put in a frame, it's literally a sample. So I'm quite pleased with that, it's a good start. I'm liking how the colours have kind of brought in this orangey colour. And maybe the next ones we might use some of this yellowy stuff. I don't know, we'll just see. What I like is once you get started with this, it's the same when you do painting in your sketchbook. It leads to other things. It gets your juices flowing. It gets your creativity going. And that's why I say try not to think about it too much. Just get out, get into your threads, get your fabrics out, choose some things and start. So I'm just cutting um, a couple of new pieces here. very random it's all very random so we'll just put down stabilizer I want to try and keep some of these creases a little bit I can. I do like them. They're very random. And it's all about not being in control again, isn't it? Right, so the question is what am I going to put onto this one for a sampling? I think I'm going to do it half and half. So I'm just going to trim this back a little bit because there's too much of it. And I'm just going to put it on there. And pin it down like this. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just messing about. There's no rhyme or reason. I could put it, I suppose, actually. Here's another thought. This is, this is what happens when you start. I could put it at the top. I could put it at the bottom. Or I could even put it in the middle and have the seed heads as though that's like a, I don't know, a line of hedgerow or something that you have this sort of dark patch in the middle and then you have your seed heads coming at the top. Hmm, so many choices, but I think we're going for down at the bottom for this one. Here we go. Right, I'm going to go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so what I've done is I've just done a quick bit of random stitching just to hold that down in a bit of dark blue thread so that it's actually held in place. I'm actually just going to trim this back a little bit because it's a bit it's a bit bonkers this fabric and it does get caught on things. It's, that's just a thread falling off. Um, so we're just going to trim that back a little bit just to make it a bit more manageable to stitch. And again I'm going to start down at the bottom down here and see where we get to with some umbly, umbly umbles. 
and I'm just going to hold this lovely creasy fabric in place because I really love the creasiness of it. And what I've got is a really dark brown thread because I wanted the dark brown to show up against the navy. And I think what I want to do with this stalk is I'm going to zigzag it so that I'm going to zigzag a stitch up it so it stands out. Just felt like doing that, don't know why. Okay, so this is that little piece finished now. You can see the texture that I've got going on down here, I hope. And up here I've done dark brown seed heads. I've kept all the crinkly bits as much as I could and then I did a sort of a copper colour and then I did the light goldy sort of colour here. I decided I wasn't going to use the really thicker, the thicker thread of the, of the ones that I had um, on my machine with this. I felt as though it was a little bit too thick and asking a little bit too much of my machine to do that. So, um, ooh, a little bit of thread there. Um, so you can see what it looks like now. I think it's rather nice. Um, if I put a little frame on it, um, see different things. I don't think it really works so well with that one. I think we'll put that one out of the way. We'll try it with the square one. There we go. That's better. That gives you a better idea of what's going on. And again, that could be framed up quite nicely. It's almost a finished piece. Although it's just meant to be a sample, there's enough going on and enough sort of... Um, in the composition I think there to make it into a little piece or you could perhaps be taking these little samples and you know turning them into a little book cover or something like that if you're really if you're really <laughs> clever with your sampling you can turn them into something afterwards obviously I didn't leave a great deal of fabric down the side here really so let's put that to one side for a moment and we'll just have a little another little reminder of what this one looked like this one is much much simpler I'll do the same thing again you can see the stalks almost fit into the square bit. Um, it's a much simpler piece. It allows, actually, quite interesting, it allows this back fabric to sort of show up, the crinkles in that show up more, because it's actually much simpler. I do like the dark blue. I think it's it's kind of kept it simple, having that as the same colour as the background, but you still get this sense of something going on, as though almost as though they're lost in the mist or something like that. And as I say, I do like the thicker thread. I like that very much. I like I did some zigzag on these, and I think that's quite effective as well. And you can see the difference when you put the two together. They're like completely different pieces in a way. It's exactly the same sort of construction and the same sort of design. I think it's partly because these are a bit more, these are a bit more bendy perhaps, or perhaps because I did more of them, and because it's got the brown rather than just the blue. I don't know. So you'll have to let me know, please. I'd love to know which you prefer, if you prefer either of them. Um, I'll show you the backs again because I think it's always good to see the back. You can see there's, there's kind of it's kind of quite busy up there. It's quite busy up there. This has obviously got the extra stitching holding the blue fabric down. But you can see it's really very messy. It wasn't meant to be anything posh, and it's so easy to do, honestly. And as I said before, you can draw things out. I mean, you could even be drawing things out and stitching it from the back if the dark fabric is too difficult to draw onto. You could actually do your design from the back and take a chance and work it from the back. Um, there's a very famous artist, which some of who some of you may know, called Alice Kettle, who ma does massive pieces. She's very famous, and she works from the back. She's always worked from the back of her fabric. So as I say, let me know which of these you prefer, either or neither. Is this something that would get you inspired to have a go at free machine embroidery if you haven't done it before? Is it something if you're already able to do that? You know, would you like to have a go at something like this? If it's inspired you, that's great. Let me know. Please leave me a comment. Let me know where you are in the world. Let me know if it's your first time here. Just say hello. It's really lovely to connect with people. I love having a bit of a chat. And let me know what you're doing. If you're not doing things like this, let me know what you are doing that's creative. Because I think this is a lovely space to share 
uh, what we're doing and um, anything that's creative, you know, that's really great to hear. So I will see what happens next week. I've no idea what we're going to be doing, same sort of thing but, or something different. I want to do some more sampling. I'm, I'm in the autumn vibe here so we're going to go uh, do a bit more of this and see where we go with it. So I will say cheerio for now. I'll see you again in my studio next week. Thanks so much for joining me here. Para